Hello and welcome to Countdown to Power with me, Graham Price. That day when I came home from guitar practice and turned on the television to find a smarmy and soggy Sonak trying his best to be heard above the sounds of D-Ream and not look like too much of a twat in the pissing rain seemed like a hell of a lot longer than four or five weeks ago to me. Don't know what to do to you. I've always said the whole country goes a bit bonkers in a few weeks before a general election. But it's hard to tell this time, because it seems like half the country went bonkers years ago, and the Tories were off the fucking rockers to begin with. Not sure they were ever even on the rockers. What does that even mean? What are you, rockers? Does it mean a rocking chair? Because I'd like to think that there's quite a few Tory twats that should just sit gently rocking in silence in a room somewhere for the next few years and think about the absolute catastrophe fuck they made of running, sorry, ruining our country. I doubt there's any of them that have got that level of self-awareness, though. In any case, here's a few of the events that have stood out for me in the past week or so of the election campaign, and a few of my colourful opinions on them, too. We'll get right on it after this. Hey, just a quick interjection. I just want to say that if you enjoy the video, then remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate it, don't we, Annie? If you really want to help out, then you can make a donation via PayPal or the Buy Me A Coffee page or become a patron. Links are in the description box. What's that I can see over there? Oh my god! It's a light at the end of the tunnel! We haven't seen one of them for years, have we? <laughs> Thank you. I don't imagine that a lot of Tory voters watch my videos. I spend a lot of my time calling them gullible idiots, so it's, it's probably understandable. There are a few though, and they're as welcome as anybody else. I'm going to guess that even the most disillusioned Tory voters thought that their favourite choice of dishonest, deplorable, disgusting grifters would have some sort of plan and be capable of running a decent election campaign, though. They are the most successful political party in history, apparently. I'd imagine they thought the scandals would stop for a few weeks, too. I thought the scandals would stop for a few weeks. Despite me having about as much faith in the Tory party as I do in her ability to do A-level maths. But no, not at all. Of course not. It's like they had one final chance to come together and show a unified and unanimously determined party that wanted to heal the rifts of the past and regain the trust of the public. And instead... They decided to show us all the absolute gutter level of their despicable dishonesty just one last time. Giles, could we? Giles, Peregrine and Meredith have come up with a wizard wheeze. The PM has committed to making an announcement tomorrow, and word around the Windsor bar is that he's going to pull the trigger. Miles, Paris and Judith have already had a flutter, but Alistair and Barnaby haven't managed to meander down the Strand and rendezvous with William Hill just yet. <laughs> I may have got a little bit carried away there, but you know, you can just imagine that it's going like that, can't you? There's an ongoing investigation by the Gambling Commission, and so far, Cabinet Minister Alistair Jack, Sir Philip Davies, Craig Williams... Tory candidate Laura Sanders, her husband Tony Lee and Tory member of the Welsh Parliament Russell George were all under investigation along with some members of Sunak's security team and since I wrote this script in the time it took me between writing this and recording this apparently a load more have been arrested as well or are getting investigated or something. It's I'm tempted to use the Nadine Dorries quote again but I'll, I'll hold back. Sunak's response has been weak and pathetic, as expected, and the Tories at one point had the cheek to try and imply that it's all very unfair for this to be being brought to light right now, and that it's a distraction technique by the police. It's hard to know what to say about that, really. In a rather annoying turn of events, though, Labour candidate Kevin Craig has also been discovered to have placed a bet on himself losing... Now, I'd imagine there's a lot of wannabe Tory MPs looking really closely, trying to find other Labour MPs that have done things like this. And they've only come up with this one so far, but it's still pretty annoying, isn't it? Thankfully, Starmer did what Sunak didn't and took immediate action and said that he withdrew support from Kevin Craig. 
And the guy has had the decency to apologise and say that he'll donate his winnings to charity if he, if, if, you know, if he does win anything out of it. Which he probably will, because he's not very likely to win. He's in a seat with a Tory majority of over 27,000, apparently. To be honest, I don't really care about the outcome of the investigation. The Tories will be long out of office before it's concluded. I'm just happy to see that even now, during their actual campaign, the stupid posh bastards have delivered one last scandal that has demonstrated exactly why we need to yeet these absolute fucking rat slags into the Thames and never let them near office ever, ever again. Nigel Frottage and Dick Lice are doing the rounds and absolutely capitalising on general voter apathy, disillusioned Tory voters, racists and the eternally gullible to increase their vote share, as you might imagine. Nigel was too scared of being called a racist to go on campaign in Scotland this week because he's a fanny. So he sent Dick Tice instead because he's a less well-known racist. But you've got to hand it to the Scots. It doesn't look like they'll be voting for Mr Brexit bullshit and his sidekick. Or his side dick. (laughs) I don't like reform being popular. I don't like right-wing parties in general. They operate on deceitful ideologies and they attract extremists. Reform are no different. And a little look at their continuous stream of gaslighting, cherry-picking and bullshittery on Twitter can confirm that. They're absolutely continually promoting this idea that there is some sort of revolution going on and that Nigel Farage is going to be the next Prime Minister, despite this being almost literal impossibility. I don't think they're exactly the sharpest tools in the box. Obviously, they didn't get their tools off Keir's dad. Now, I don't think they're very smart, but they're probably employing some quite smart people and they're probably paying them a lot of money. And these people are being brazenly deceitful when they promote the idea that Dave from Burnley can wake up to a reform majority government and Prime Minister Nigel Farage on the 5th of July if he just votes for Nigel the Brexit liar one more time. They're really running with the idea that a vote for reform is basically a vote for Nigel Farage rather than just a vote for your local racist Weatherspoons day drinker. It's kind of the opposite of what the Tories are doing, really. Lee Anderson is making an absolute blazing cockwaffle of himself every day on Twitter, multiple times, by making up polls and then posting pictures of them. But he's too fucking stupid to crop them properly half the time, and he keeps getting found out. He's got thousands of people calling him a bellin 24 hours a day, which is obviously lovely to see. But it's actually shocking that a man that clearly fucking dumb was ever allowed to take any kind of office. And I got this through the door yesterday. I've got a vote Labour sign in my front window, so thankfully he didn't knock and I didn't have to tell a racist to get the fuck off my doorstep. I think the prick had a bit of a cheek putting it through the letterbox though, really. I think I'll keep it as a souvenir. Got a feeling this election might be one to remember. Tell you what, it's worth remembering as well. Whether you like reform or not, every vote for them is more like more than likely a vote that the Tories aren't getting than what Labour aren't getting. So, you know. Silver linings. Other parties have been a bit less prominent in the news now that the seven-way debates are done. I've seen a few polls that have put the Lib Dems ahead of the Tories and it's good to see them but I don't want to get too excited and end up disappointed. I've been disappointed enough by elections in the last 14 years. The final debate between Sunak and Starmer has taken place. I didn't take note this time because it's still getting a bit samey isn't it? We've heard it all before and we know exactly what's going to be said. It was worth noting that the tone of this one was clearly a lot more right wing than some of the others though. And that wasn't a surprise as it was hosted by the BBC. The questions were awful and came from some right gammony dickheads too. With that calibre of audience, the topics were inevitably also very right wing. Immigration, more performative cruelty to benefit claimants and disabled people, transphobia and a massive helping of lies about Labour's tax plans. All at all these graces hit really. There's always one thing that stands out for me when Tories are drawn into talking about welfare. I think it demonstrates the sheer contempt for people that they have. It's this thing where they say, if somebody has offered a job, 
that they are capable of doing and they refuse it, then benefits should be withdrawn. Just stop for a moment and think about what they're actually proposing there. They're saying that if you lose your £40,000 a year office job and they tell you that you have to take a zero-hour contract minimum wage job stacking shelves in Asda and you refuse, then they want to be able to punish you by condemning you to poverty, hunger, destitution, prob probable financial ruin and maybe even homelessness. I see this all the time in comment sections from right-wing munters. If... If they don't do it, take the benefits away. Some of them generally don't realise that if we adopted a society like that, they would be on their way to work, stepping over the corpses of starving children in the street. They'd be living in continual fear of being broken into and murdered in their sleep because they'd create a society where literally a couple of million people would be prowling the streets, starving in absolute destitution. It isn't possible to remain alive and see any quality of life with literally no income in this country. But that's what the Tories want to be able to threaten people with. Next time you see a Tory fuckwit saying something like that, ask them why they want to live in a society where the government can condemn a person to sheer financial ruin, misery, destitution and starvation with no trial and no system in place to defend themselves. That's Rishi's plan to get the country working again. Not to reduce waiting lists or find out why so many people have mental health problems or to support people in any way. No, his plan is to punish them. His plan is to make them poorer and make their lives harder. And he's talking about disabled people, by the way, not just unemployed people. July the 4th. Go and use your vote to put a stop to it. And make this period of history be remembered as one of the darkest and most cruel eras of government we ever saw in this country. Thank you for watching if you've gotten this far. I'm sure there's been loads of things that I haven't mentioned, but I feel like I've probably rambled on enough. There's been things like the Tories changing the name of the CCHQ Twitter account to Tax Check UK during the final debate. How pathetic is that? It's been doctors on strike again too, which seems a little counterintuitive to me right now, but I always support them and I haven't looked into that one very much yet. Let's just note though that there was never any doctors on strike during Labour's last time in office at all. Let's hope we can get back to that level of sanity as soon as possible. At the beginning there was talk of the polls tightening and I expected to see that too. It hasn't happened though. The Tories and now polling their lowest ratings in history and Sunak is even more unpopular than Truss in some polls. They are heading for an absolute annihilation event next Thursday <laughs> and I'm loving it. Please hit the like button if you've had a giggle with me and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help loads and if you want to help a bit further there's links to PayPal and Patreon in the descriptions box or you can just buy me a coffee in there as well. And it's very, very much appreciated indeed. Remember to visit stopthetories.vote to make sure you know who you need to be voting for to make sure a Tory doesn't win if you're in a constituency where one could. The Tories don't seem to have used bots as much this time, but Reform have got thousands of bots and fake accounts on the go all over social media. And Graham Hughes of the channel Politics Social is trying to get a campaign going to try and combat them. You can find a link to his site, endthetories.com, in the descriptions box as well. The Tories are absolutely finished already, really, because Parliament has been dissolved. But I don't know about you, but I won't feel like they're really defeated after these 14 long years until I see those exit polls at 10pm on July the 4th. I hope they show what we've waited so long for, the final tick on the clock of our countdown to power. Remember to visit stopthetories.vote to make sure you know who you need to vote for and make sure the Tory doesn't take a, take a, take a shit in your seat, Jesus.